doing up there? In life, you've got to take a risk. Every day's a gamble. You've got to remember, guys, it's hard doing the job and filming it. You better answer quickly, because else I'll just take this bridge away and you'll be stuck. That's the way, boy. Being at a fun fair, isn't it? Here we go. I made it. Yeah, check this out. My wife bought me this off of the old eBay. I want to have the opportunity to have it in there so I can have it on and off. Or I'll just show you what I've got going on there. Ow! Happy days. Let's get home. See you in a bit. Then we're home. See they magic fingers? I'm skating on thin ice here. Oh, yeah, baby. I'm hoping I've got enough to finish it down through here. Just like that. That's what you call like a glove. Where the X's is, that's the bit I need to cut out. I just ran a little bit of cork all the way underneath. I'm here to do a job, look. I literally went and got the camera. Bet it's the first time you've ever had to do a bit of electricians over the pond, isn't it? Yeah. Things I make you do, mate, eh? It's all even worse. <laughs> Three-way light switch. Yeah, a little weatherproof enclosure. Right, let's have a look, see if it works then, Mitch. Happy, happy days. That's proper quality. Look at that. Proper the hammer. Well made up with that, Mitch. Thank you very much, mate. Yeah, well, my Moving on to the last job there then, Mitch. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Made up with that. Brings a pond to life now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. James the Koi Whisperer. We've got a bit more maintenance to do to the new Koi Pond that we're building. We've just been down to b and I'll spin around the camera, show you what we got. Right then, so we're just getting set up. We've got a load of timber here. Tobes out there helping me bring it all through. What our plan is today is underneath here, we're gonna get all of this tongue and grooved. Just started putting up some framework underneath just to put our tongue and groove on. Hopefully we make a decent job of it. Couldn't really work out the best thing to use to go underneath. Well, these packs worked out £8.50 a pack. Got eight packs of them. I might need a few more. You get five in each pack. It's 7.5 mil thick. But hopefully we can make it look half decent and we'll see how we get on. Got a fair old adventurous day today, and us boy. See if we can do it. We're going to try our best. I would say we're not chippies, we're not carpenters. But we're going to try our best and see what happens. But we got the saw out. Let's crack right on. Lovely jubbly. Right, so I'll spin the camera around and show you what we've been up to. I always get winds that I don't video what I do. I just show people what I do afterwards. But you've got to remember, guys, it's hard doing the job and filming it, especially in the situation what we're actually doing today. At the moment, what we've done, we've just spaced out our buttons just to hold the tongue and groove on. So what we've done, we've started with the tongue and groove. We've got a lovely, nice, tight fit all the way down through here. A lovely, nice, tight fit along the back. And then basically, I've just marked and measured where the first lot of lights are going to go because these lights are going to be in the ceiling. So it's like a faux ceiling sort of thing. We are going to paint this as well. We're not sure whether to stain it. We'll probably end up painting it black because I want that feature to be all black. But it took a little bit of working out. So I've got my lines here. So this is the dead center of the pond right down through which will be dead center in the middle of the shower so what's going to happen is that these boards they're 12 across dead center dead center I'm working it out so it's all in my head and it's hard for me to explain but that's the dead center so i'm gonna have two lights there i'm gonna have two lights there and obviously two lights there but i've got to pre-drill my hose now because i also won't be able to get my hand in to grab the cables back down i'm going to show you the lights that are going in there in a minute but we're going to carry on with the video and see how we get on but it's getting a bit tricky because to reach across there is getting a little bit tricky so we're going to get this bit of timber go across there Tove's going to be one side i'm going to be the other side and all we're using staple gun not even sure what they're called but they've got some nails in i'm just stapling up the tongue and groove and it seems to be holding it an absolute treat i am putting a bit too many staples in each one but i ain't really worried about it it ain't going to come down it's going to stay up there for the rest of its life and to be fair, these tongue and groove bits, they all interlock, so this sort of gives it a bit of structure anyway. I'm just hoping it don't bow and twist. If it does, then I have to think of something different down the line. Making sure I've put ample staples in there across to keep it up there. And it's so lightweight, this tongue and groove is. It should be fine. What are you doing up there? It's the only way I can do it, boy. Gonna fall in now, aren't you? In life, mate. In life. Where are you two? There he is. In life, you've got to take a risk. Every day's a gamble. 
If I fall 25 foot down, yeah, it's gonna hurt, but it'll be all right. Thank you, mother with the rabbits. You told me how much you love me. You better answer quickly, because else I'll take this bridge away and you'll be stuck. You'll be stuck over there, sunshine. You love me enough. You love me enough. Yeah, of course you do. Right, so Tobes, I sent Tobe over there because he's smaller than me. He climbed across this bridge. I did help him. Health and safety officers, don't worry about it. I got my eye on him. He's only five foot down. I'm sure he'll be fine. Young bones, young legs, nothing will break. <laughs> I'm only joking. So where we're at, we've done another 10 from here. We've gone across. Got to work out the centre point in a minute, make sure I'm dead centre before I drill the next hole where it lines up. But what I'm going to do, I don't really... Oh, I nearly went in then. <laughs> so I don't really want to be drilling between two. Ideally, I want it to be to the closest full centre of wood. See how it goes. That's the way, boy. Hopefully, I've got that in the right place. Looks pretty good. I'm going through there. They look pretty good. Right, then we've got to work out that one next. Do the next hole to So what we've got to do is measure off of that one, the distance between there and there, and get that into the middle. Yep. So grab that one here. Did you get all that too? So. <laughs> It's like being at a fun fair, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. <sighs> this is why I don't film everything, because some things don't go to plan. There's probably an easier way. Just trying so hard. Just gonna go. <laughs> ah, Put your like... camera down. I need you to hold it. <laughs> right, now pull yours up tight. That's where you need to put your line on the end of that tape measure. That's it. Put... That's it. Just a little line, that's it. And then we'll use that to set square because I've measured that to the centre of the wood. It's the only way. Sometimes it is the only way. Where did you put your line? Right, that pencil there, and put a line right there facing up towards me. Do a line all the way across. Nope, the other one. Nope, the end of it. That's it, do a full. That's it, that's enough. Hold on to that. Mrs. Whisperer, I need you to grab me that drill, because I'm skating on thin ice here. Oh yeah, baby. Got tidying up, we've done all the bits. Got a rubbish pile again. More stuff for the bin man. Happy with how it's looking though. Got a little more done today. Massive thank you to me boy helping me out because there's no way I was getting my ass in there. Not a chance. Yeah, so it's looking pretty cool to be fair. Got all the lines. Everything's measured up exactly how I want it. But I'm a little bit short. So we're short by seven pieces or eight. Seven and a half it works out because I've just used the off cuts, worked out how many pieces I'm short. So I need another two packs because you get five in each pack. But I've got 20 minutes to get to B&Q to get some more else I'll have to get it tomorrow. So I'm going to nip the B&Q. Hopefully I get there in time. Well, let me just crack the B&Q a minute. I'll be back in a minute. There we go. I made it. Happy days. Let's get on. I'll see you in a bit. See they magic fingers? Forward and back. See, quite recently I've seen a lot of people been using the magic fingers. Just be sure, don't wear them out. You don't want to be wearing out your magic fingers. Right then, so real quickly, I picked up some brackets when I was in there, just so I can put some more shelves in my filter house when we get to that. I've also picked up some more shrad nails because I'm running a bit low and I thought I ain't got enough to finish it. What I did, I decided to pick up three packs. Of the reason being, I think I've got enough left. I know I'm going to need seven pieces to go across here. I said to myself on the way in there, I've got all of the off cuts to go underneath here, but that will only take me to here. And I've still got to finish down to there. So I picked up an extra pack with the extra bits. I should have enough now, hopefully. If I haven't got enough and I'm short by one bit, then I'll have to get the magic fingers back out. But that being said, let's crack on. Let's get this done here.
Tell you what, bit big to be in here really. But told, it's disappeared. So, I'm doing it solo. Bit dangerous, but like I said earlier on, got to live life on the edge. If you don't, you don't get nowhere in life. I'm not telling people to hang over their palms, but just take a chance. Like that. Ow! Only joking. I think I scared Mrs. Whisper behind the camera there a bit more than what I did anything else. Never mind. <laughs> Thank you, mother, for the stable gun. There we have it. Lovely jubbly. All done. Looking the absolute hammer. More than happy with that. So the next job, what leads me on to doing underneath here, I can chuck some battens up both sides, like I did underneath here. But I have got to use those fin battens that I've got there to go up underneath here. Let me get this done and I'll show you what it's like. Well then, so I've just put all the battens up all the way across. Basically what this does, it gives me a nice flat area to put all of my tongue and groove on. That runs all the way down through. So now I'm gonna whack up through with the tongue and groove. But just coming across this bit here, this bit's gonna be a little bit more tricky for me to do for the pure fact. This here's got a nice flat face for my wood to finish off. But where I've done this and I've feveraged it, as you can see this bit here, it dips in a bit. So when I put my tongue and groove up here, I'm gonna have to make sure I get my cuts right to get it as flat as I can along this back edge. Cause as you can see up through here, there's a slight gap, which obviously that's the flat face of the timber here, which across the front of the pond there, it's got the structure of the 6 b 2 well, Obviously, cause I feveraged this and it's not got the same effect over there because it's a different building as you can see from back here it's a different sort of structure what i've got there to there some of these buttons do look like they're bowed a little bit but i don't think it's going to be a massive problem time the tongue and groove goes on it will look one piece like it does up underneath there but i'm going to put it up see what it looks like and if i'm happy with it it will stay if not i'll have to make up a different idea but let's see how we get on and let's crack on early making progress here i've got a long way to go but I will get it done. This time I haven't drilled out the actual holes for the centre yet. Basically there's six lights running down through here. I'm gonna put all of the tongue and groove up and then put my hand up. It's a little bit easier. I can put a bit of wire up and pull this cable down to the right place where it needs to be. But I wanna put all of the tongue and groove up, count the tongue and groove spaces because it's all right me marking and measuring. But what I wanna do is make sure that I'm in a dead centre of each bit of tongue and groove. So I'll work out how many bits of tongue and groove it takes to go all the way down to the end. Let's just crack on and see what it looks like in a bit. Yeah, this is the timer switch that I've got to run in my filter race to run my extractor fan. Cause I don't really want to be running that 24 seven, but I want to be, I want to have the opportunity to have it in there so I can have it on and off. Just set up a timer switch. So it comes on, clears a bit of the air or dampness, whatever gets into the filter race, if I ever need it. So I picked up that, I also picked up I've got a load of these lights to go into the ceiling. This is what I was talking about, which they go right in underneath. And the reason why I went with these is because there's three different types that you can have on them. You can have warm white, natural white, or you can have daylight. So the reason why I went with these is because you can, basically you can pick what sort of light setting that you wanna have reflected down on your pond. And you can just change that by that little switch there, which is quite a nice little gadget. So until the actual pond's up and running, I'll set this to, to the light that works best, not just for me, but for filming as well. So they're quite cool little lights. They're LED, they last for three years. The electrician popping around later on, so he's gonna help me fit all these in place. Bit worried about him hanging over the pond with live cables, but we'll have to make do with that. See, I'm glad I bought an extra pack because I definitely 100% need it. Get on the Playboy, nick their towel, see? Keeping the conservatory clean. So I definitely need this pack. Five bits left. I'm getting about four bits off of each pack. I'm hoping I've got enough to finish it down through here. Let's see what happens. I reckon there's just enough to finish it. So this is the bit where I said it's gonna start getting a bit tricky, but it ain't too bad if you got yourself a template. So all you gotta do, cut yourself a smaller bit of template, chuck it inside, and then mark 
from the inside of where that bit finishes and then you've got to allow for a little bit to go down this gap and how you work out that bit is that you just pop this bit the opposite way in there like that put your mark on the end here and then mark a full straight line across there and then you know that you've got that bit and that bit and that's the bit you've got to leave and you've got to cut this bit out so you literally from there again pop that bit in you know how far down that bit comes so then from there you put your mark on this corner because this is the corner that we need to keep to go into there so you put your mark there and then you go into there put your mark there straight line across and then that gives you that distance left which will tuck in tight to there let me show you how it's done so i've transferred that template across to my main bit of wood that's going up where the x's is that's the bit i need to cut out i'll do that now and show you what it looks like when it's all up there just like that that's what you call like a glove i had to put the clamps on because i've got a little bit of bowl in this bit of wood but when i take these clamps off that there will just tighten up this gap as well happy days but look that's how you do it so i'm on the last bit of wood i'm hoping i've got enough it's going to be tight i mean super super tight to be fair i know people like saying everyone needs an extra inch but i really do at the moment just hoping i've got enough Two, three, four, five. It's going to be tight. Happy days. I literally just had enough. I had a tiny little sliver to fill in down through here, which it just managed to work out bang on. So I was well happy there. What I've done here as well, as you can see here, I've just filled in the back of the gap just before I paint it, just to tidy up any of the little imperfections that you could have saw earlier on. Just because of the grain of the wood and the way things are sometimes, I just ran a little bit of cork all the way underneath. I know it is meant for inside, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Time I get some Santex on there, I'm sure it won't be no problem whatsoever. Seal it up. None of this is getting wet. It is outside in the elements. Never ever get wet, so hopefully it'll be all right. So what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just working out with my hole saw where my lights need to come. I've pulled the cables through there. But what I'm trying to work out is how much of a distance that I run it down because they're not in line with these because I've offset them. But what I've got to worry about, my biggest concern, if you look up underneath here, if you see this joist, well, basically my light fitting needs to fit there. But the problem being, I'm going to have to offset this first one by one panel just so I can get my light fitting up because else it'll hit into that joist and that ain't no good. So what I'm going to do is put the first one there and then I've worked out the rest of them that they're all symmetrical all the way down through. I've drilled out the first one. I've put the tapes on the other ones just to make sure I'm dead happy of where everything lines up. And I'm more than happy with that. So I'm going to crack on with the old saw, get them all drilled out, ready for my electrician to come in the next 20 minutes. So perfect timing. Another good job done. So that's all ready for the electrician. I'm going to carry on going all the way down through. And I'll be back with you in a bit. Check this out. My wife bought me this off of the old eBay. Happy days. I think I'm going to sit that right up there. Looking the absolute hammer. Do not disturb. There he is, look. Electrician's back out. My mate Mitch. He's here to do a job, look. I literally went and got the camera. And he's already put one light up. Super quick, and I like that, because then it means it's super cheap for me. <laughs> yeah. Happy days, mate. Yeah, this is going to look proper tidy. So we decided to put these lights on um, on daylight, see what that looks like. And it's so easy just to pull them back down, change it over, see what it looks like. Happy days. Going to have a bit of fun in here in a minute. I'm sure I'm going to get a bit of funny footage going across there or doing, trying to get underneath here. To, this one is just a, a little bit too far of a reach to get in there, but... I'm sure he'll be all right, won't he, Mitch? We'll get there, mate. We'll get there. What do you reckon, Mitch? Bet it's the first time you've ever had to do a bit of electrician over the pond, isn't it? 
Yeah, a little bit awkward to say the least, but we'll get there. And he's we'll in flip flops as well, look. Just in case I fall in there. Happy days. Things I make you do, mate, eh? This one's even worse. <laughs> Yeah, double time, this, isn't it? Double time, mate, yeah. Well, we're, he's doing it on a few of the Copperbergs too, so it's a bit risky, that, mate, isn't it? Yeah, There's our light switch, just getting sorted out. Three-way light switch. Yeah, and a weatherproof enclosure. Happy days. And that one there's going to be living up here. Mitch is going to do a nice, tidy job of sorting out all these wires, because I don't have a clue, but I know that blue one is live. Been staying away from that one, just in case. Right, let's have a look, see if it works then, Mitch. Right, far side of the pond. Hey, near side, and then the soffits. Right, in there. Happy days, mate, that. That is the absolute hammer. Proper quality. So we got some decent light for nighttime filming now. Yeah, I like it right there. So we got different lights on it at the moment, just to see what colour that I want to go with. So it's hard for you to make out on a camera. So we got, these ones are the... Warm lights, aren't they? They're warm white, yeah. Warm white. They're daylight, then, wasn't it? And they're daylight. You can, on the light, you can switch them between warm, cool, and daylight. Oh, wicked. You've got three lighting options on one light. Happy, happy days. That's proper quality. So, yeah. Well made up with that. Brings a pond to life now. And look at that. Proper the hammer. Well made up with that, Mitch. Thank you very much, mate. No worries. My pleasure. Moving on to the last job there, then, Mitch. Whack up my timer switch for the old extractor fan. Yeah. Happy days. That's it, mate. Drive him in there, mate. That's it. We have it. That day's working an absolute treat. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah, so you have to let me know what you think, guys. Let me know if you think I've done a nice, tidy job. I've got to be honest with you. Me being over on that pond, bent over, me back, I can certainly feel me back aching a bit today. I've still got to um, do all of the painting as well, get all that done. I do apologise about the light at the moment. I'm absolutely knackered. I'm just chilling out here with a cup of tea at the moment in this conservatory. Laid out like a beach well, but I ain't worried about it because I've had a banging day. I've got a load more done. And I'm super, super happy with it. That being said, that brings me to an end of another video. But be sure there'll be another video next week. I've got loads going on. Loads of stuff to show you. And, um, well, on that note, there's only one thing left to say. Have a great week, everyone. And I'll see you all on the next one. Thank you, mother for the rabbits.